Good evening, you're tuning in to 7 Edition. I'm Shafi Garazali and these are tonight's top stories. A new law is being drafted to replace the Sedition Act. Commuters to pay higher fares for e-hailing services. And 22 countries call on China to halt mass detention camps. We begin tonight's bulletin with this story. Commuters may have to pay more and wait longer for a ride when using e-hailing service starting tomorrow. Effective July 12th, only e-hailing drivers with the PSV licence will be allowed to be on the road. It was reported that only 10% out of 200,000 Grab Malaysia's active drivers had obtained their licences as of Tuesday. With fewer drivers on the road, ride-hailing company Grab said users may experience an increase in dynamic fares. In a statement, the company added passengers should also anticipate longer waiting time for a ride during peak hours. It also advised users to book their rides earlier, especially when catching a flight or going to an important meeting. The new e-hailing regulation would only affect private car ride-hailing services such as GrabCar, Just Grab, GrabCar Plus, as well as GrabCar Premium. To apply for the PSV license, drivers have to undergo a six-hour training session at driving centres. At the same time, pay up to 200 ringgit for the license. They must also get initial and annual vehicle checks at Puspacom, pass criminal background and medical checks, contribute to SOXO, purchase e-hailing add-on car insurance, as well as equip their cars with safety equipment, including fire extinguishers. The estimated cost to complete their requirements is 800 ringgit. Now, to get more insight on this matter, on the line with us now is the founder of Malaysian E-Hailing Association, Mehda, Daryl Chong. Hi, Daryl. Thanks for joining us this evening. Now, first of all, as we are told, only about 10% of Grab drivers have obtained the PSV license. Why is this number so low? Hi, evening, Shafika. Thanks for having me online. Um, one of the reasons that we have, we have gathered is because many of these drivers uh, actually, they were hoping for a U-turn. They were hoping that the government actually cancel the requirement for PSV, for Kuspakom, as well as the additional insurance for e-hailing. This is one of the main reasons. Uh, the, other small, the other reason being financial and also time constraints. This is, this is what we get at the association level. Right, Daryl. Um, some people suggested that the government should extend tomorrow's deadline for e-hailing drivers to get the PSV. Do you think this extension is required or um, drivers are simply not interested to get the licence? Actually, if the, if the government were to extend the deadline, we support. We think it's a good idea, but uh, at the same time, we hope that the EHO, the e-hailing operators, will get will give some uh, incentives to drivers who are already ready for tomorrow. Otherwise, it won't be fair to them. And at the, as, uh, concurrently, those who have not done, we hope that they can get it done as soon as possible since they are, they are, they are certain that the government are not going to do a U-turn at this point of time. Right. Okay, um, what can you suggest to resolve this issue for both sides? I would say an, an extension is a good idea, but not too long. And um, another issue that is, that is currently faced by the drivers is those who are ready are actually waiting for the EVP to be to be uh, issued. Without the EVP, they will not be able to drive tomorrow. So we hope that the government will able, if they are really keen on uh, giving an extension, it should be given to both those who have not done their their. The, uh, PSV and as well as those who are ready but they have yet to receive the EVP from the authority. Right. Mm, I see. Thank you, Daryl, for those insights. Um, 
That was Daryl Chong from MEDA. Moving on, the government will repeal the Sedition Act and replace it with a new law. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad said a draft of the new law is being finalised and is expected to be ready soon. Kita menarik balik undang-undang dahulu dan untuk undang-undang baru kita berada dalam status menyusun semula ayat-ayat dalam undang-undang. Dijangka diselesaikan bila itu? Ada time frame ke yang diletakkan oleh? Secepat mungkin. On July 10th, Home Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin said the government is still reviewing the Sedition Act 1948 and has yet to decide on whether it should be amended or abolished. Tan Sri Muhyiddin had also acknowledged that the government is still committed and, look, and looking into what Pakatan Harapan had promised before the elections. On to another matter. The government will see if there was any interference from the Johor Palace into the federal government's effort to lower the age limit for youths to 30. To Dr. Mahathir said the different age limits between the federal as well as the Johor state government could be due to the age of members or organisations. We we'll have, we'll have to study and see whether the reason given is acceptable. He was speaking at a media conference at Parliament today. On Monday, Johor announced it will maintain its categorization of youth for its policies as those between 15 and 40, despite the federal government's move to lower the age limit to 30. A day later, the state government changed its stand to lower the youth age limit to 30. However, less than 24 hours later, the state government said that it would maintain its age limit at 40, following advice from several parties. Meanwhile, Tun Dr Mahathir also disclosed that the National Security Council Amendment Bill 2019 will be reviewed before the government tables it at the Day One Rakyat again. According to the Premier, the move is necessary as there were many different opinions that needed to be considered. Kita dapati banyak pendapat yang berbeza dan uh, undang-undang itu perlu dikaji untuk memasukkan idea-idea Yang telah kita, yang telah disampaikan kepada kita. The amendments, among other things, would see the power to declare security zones transferred from the Prime Minister to the Yang Dipertuan Agong on the advice of the National Security Council. Now, the bill to amend the federal constitution was also retabled at the Day One Rakyat today. Besides lowering the voting age to 18, the new bill is to include autom automatic voter registration and the lowering of the age for electoral candidates to 18. It was tabled for first reading by Youth and Sports Minister Said Sadiq Said Abdul Rahman. The second reading is scheduled for July 16th. The bill was withdrawn yesterday to include the opposition's proposals for both amendments. On to another matter, the government will conduct a study on allegations that the Penang South Reclamation PSR project will affect the environment as well as the livelihoods of fishermen. To Dr. Maha, they said appropriate action would be taken if there is evidence relating to the claims. He was responding to questions on the dissatisfaction raised by fishermen and non-governmental organizations, NGOs, over the project. This morning, a crowd of about 200 people marched to parliament to protest against the project as well as sand mining in Pera. Last Friday, Penang Chief Minister Chao Konyo said the Environment Department DOE has given the nod for the project near Teluk Kumba. In Trungganu, a lieutenant commander of the Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, APMM, was charged at the Kuala Trungganu Sessions Court today for bribery. 
The accused, Mohammad Noor Effendi Zaukifli, who was attached to the agency's Kamaman branch, pleaded not guilty to 10 counts of accepting bribes totaling 48,700 ringgit. The offences were allegedly committed between April 22, 2017 and May 29th the same year. The 38-year-old was accused of receiving bribes in order not to take action against foreign fishing vessels for encroaching into the Thiranganu waters. Meanwhile, a 32-year-old single mother pleaded not guilty in the Kuala Barang Magistrate's Court today to three counts of neglecting her children. According to the charge, Siti Minah Muhammad had left her three children, aged 6 to 12 years old, at their low-cost house in Kuala Barang, Hulu Trunganu, without supervision for three days. The three siblings were only rescued by welfare department officers after being notified by concerned neighbours on July 3rd. Coming up next, 15 dead in a Pakistan train collision. Don't go anywhere. We're back with foreign news. China is coming under mounting pressure to close mass detention camps where minority ethnic groups are being held in the country's northwest. More than 20 members of the United Nations Human Rights Council, UNHR, have signed a joint letter criticizing Beijing's treatment of at least a million Turkish Uyghurs as well as other Muslims. In the unprecedented letter, ambassadors from 22 countries voiced their concerns about reports of unlawful detention, as well as widespread surveillance and restrictions, particularly targeting Uyghurs and other minorities in Xinjiang. Britain, France and Germany were among the European nations to join the call, along with Australia, Canada as well as Japan. However, the letter fell short of activists' demands for a formal statement to be read out at the Council or a resolution submitted for a vote. The letter to the forum's president dated July 8 cited China's obligations as a member of the 47-state forum to maintain the highest standards and uphold its national laws as well as international obligations to respect human rights and fundamental freedoms, including freedom of religion or belief across China. Now in Pakistan, 15 people were killed in a collision between a passenger train and a stationary freight train near the central town of Rahim Yar Khan, while more than 70 others were injured in the incident that took place at the Walhar railway station. According to authorities, the collision happened when the Akbar Express going from Bahawalpur to Quetta was diverted onto the incorrect track at the station before hitting the parked freight train. Rescue operations were underway at the collision site, with workers using equipment to get to, to get to some of those trapped in the wreckage. The injured were immediately taken to a nearby government hospital. Pakistan's ageing railway network carries both passengers and goods across the country, but suffers periodic derailments, as well as other accidents due to poor infrastructure. U.S. President Donald Trump on Wednesday ordered an investigation into France's planned tax on tech giants, a move that could result in retaliatory tariffs. The French parliament is expected to approve the new tax on Thursday, while the probe into unfair trade practices could pave the way for Washington to impose punitive tariffs, something Trump has done repeatedly since taking office. According to the Trade Representative's Office, the proposed 3% tax on total annual revenues of companies providing services to French consumers only applies to the largest tech companies, such as Google and Facebook. Some internet heavyweights have taken advantage of low-tax jurisdictions in places like Ireland while paying next to nothing in other countries where they derive huge profits. The so-called Section 301 investigation is the primary tool the Trump administration has used in the trade war with China to justify tariffs against what the U.S. says are unfair trade practices.
Authorities will soon hold hearings to allow for public comment on the issue several weeks before issuing a final report with a recommendation on any actions to take. Now let's hop on to our daily segment Clickbait, where we take a look at what's trending and making rounds in the cyber world today. Children are known to be susceptible to diseases, which keeps parents constantly vigilant of the hygiene surrounding them. Recently, a mother learned a great lesson after her baby girl suffered allergic reactions from a baby dining chair as she forgot to disinfect the seat before placing her child in it. Agnes Chu shared the experience on her Facebook, reminding parents of the importance of sanitizing everything that kids will be in direct contact with. In the Facebook post, she wrote that one cannot just simply wipe the baby chair, but actually use a sanitizer to disinfect it. Just moments after her daughter was placed in the seat, the happy and healthy baby girl started developing allergy symptoms, ears, neck and even eyes turning a little red. Agnes thought it was simply mosquito bites, but it was only after they reached home that she realised the child's face, neck and various parts of her body was red, itchy and hot to the touch. Various methods to soothe the child was put to work, but it was only after the mother applied some aloe vera cream that did the trick. The poor baby girl was brought to the clinic and the doctor confirmed that the toddler was suffering from allergic reaction to dust, dust mites or something similar. At the end of the post, she admitted that she did not blame the restaurant, but it was in fact her carelessness of not properly disinfecting the chair. Thanks for staying with us. The government's opposition to take over Plus Malaysia Berhad was due to the two major shareholders of the highway concessionaires. According to Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng, Kazana National Berhad and the Employees Provident Fund are not agreeable to the takeover bid by Maju Holdings Sindarian Berhad. Speaking to reporters at the Parliament lobby, Lim added he will meet Maju Holdings as there is re reportedly a new offer, which differs from the original. Maju Holdings, controlled by businessman Tan Sri Abu Sahid Mohammed, had made an offer of 36 billion ringgit in 2017 for the takeover of PLUS. It has proposed a 25% reduction in toll rates to get a 10-year extension or a 30% toll reduction for a 15-year extension. Meanwhile, Works Minister Baru Bian confirmed that Maju Holdings had made a fresh bid on PLUS two weeks ago. PTPT and borrowers should not be worried about being listed on the Central Credit Reference Information System, C. Chris. Bank Nagara Assistant Governor Adnan Zailani Mohamad Zahid said being listed does not mean PTPT and borrowers are being blacklisted for housing loans. Jadi, C. Chris ni dia bukan satu mekanisme yang sepatutnya diguna untuk blacklist. Tapi dia guna untuk informasi untuk information uh, pihak bank, pihak institusi kewangan untuk membuat um, penilaian mereka sama ada mau menghulurkan atau mau meluluskan permohonan pinjaman atau atau tidak.
He stressed that CCRIS is just a reporting system on outstanding loans to help banks evaluate new applications. Adnan was commenting on a statement by Housing and Local Government Minister Zuraida Kamarudin that PTPT and borrowers will not be blacklisted by CCRIS in obtaining loans for their first home purchase. This move will be included in the youth housing policy that is expected to be launched in October. FBM KLCI rebounded today to close slightly higher at 1,679 points after seeing some last-minute bargain hunting. The benchmark index seemed to have ignored the hopes of a U.S. interest rate cut which had driven the key Asian markets higher. On to stocks to watch. Malaysia Airports Holdings Burhad MAHP has been on an upward trend for several months now with an encouraging performance in the first half of 2019. Its share price has surged to nine-month high and jumped 11% since the new passenger service charges PSC framework was released. But perhaps it's best to wait for the final outcome of the PSC to assess the long-term impact on the company's prof profitability. Cheong Nam Logistics Holdings Burhat's property development segment performed poorly this year. The company is set to face tough competition given the expectation of a stagnant property market in Johor. For the record, Johor has the most unsold properties in Malaysia over the last two years. And last but not least, KPJ Healthcare Burhat is set to benefit from its hospital network expansion in the long run. This is despite having to absorb startup losses in the near term. The company also recorded better gross margins in the first quarter this year. Now it's time for My Game On, bringing you the latest news on Malaysian esports and gaming. The Grand Finals of the Player Unknown's Battlegrounds PUBG Mobile National Championships PMNC is the place to be this Saturday as Malaysia's top 14 teams go head to head for a chance at the prize pool of 114,000 ringgit. PUBG fans can catch the showdown live at the Quill Convention Centre Kuala Lumpur at 10:30 a.m. till noon. This time around, Udo, Malaysia's first 100% digital and customizable mobile service, is partnering with Tencent Games, the world's largest gaming company and creator of PUBG for the event, where they are expected to be dropping some special announcement. So be sure to stick around for that. Game Dev Hangout is joining forces with YGout and Unreal Meetup KL tomorrow. Passionate local game developers and aspiring game developers will be at the Hangout to play locally made games, check out new local games and of course talk about games. One of the special guests that the event will host is the director of Free Play, Australia's longest running and largest independent games festival, Chad Toprak. He is an award-winning experimental game designer and independent curator, as well as half of Melbourne's video game collective Hover Garden. This is a great opportunity to engage with the local game development scene and if you're a passionate game enthusiast, make your presence known within the industry. The Hakuna Matata Mania just reached full roar as a clip featuring Timon and Pumba was released today. The scene portraying the hilarious duo attempting to rescue Simba from a flock of birds will for sure create a hype for the Lion King fans. The film will hit your nearest cinemas on July 17th onwards and the visuals wrap up 7 edition this evening. I'm Shafiq Razali. thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Good night.